Carrying on from last week's review, obviously we highlighted the, the misgivings of the show, but from my perspective more so what I enjoyed about it. But at the same time, I think that the significant thing that is missing and it's not something they can get back now is the, the why. Why do we care? Who do we care about? That's the big thing for me. At the same time, because I'm so witchy and spiritual and love all of that, I'm really enjoying those elements of it. But I am also starting to feel like they've gone, there's a big trend on witchcraft at the moment. Let's do an Agatha show rather than there's a story here. Let's tell this story. I yep. feel like it's much, much more of a box ticking exercise than an, a natural, organic story flow. That's my biggest issue with it. But I'm still enjoying where it's going at the same time, very conscious of what's missing. Well, on that note, that's I think we can end the review here. I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've said that better than I could have in however long this review is going to take. It is a box ticking exercise <laughs> that isn't focusing on story or character and is jumping on a witch trend. And, and well the most done. heartbreaking thing about See you it, next it, week. it is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the most annoying thing about it, I find, is that I actually like all the characters. And if they'd have spent a couple more episodes building the drive behind those characters and your desire to see their journeys and their stories, I would have a lot more investment. Like, I love Deborah Jo Rupp. Love her in everything she's ever done. She's adorable. I always get behind her. I always love her. She's hilarious. The fact that they uh, killed her off in this episode. episode. Spoiler. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but it's fine. Spoilers. I'll, I'll just put it's a review. A spoiler review. I'll put <laughs> it's, review. it's a review. We've got to talk um, about what happened, right? All right. Um, here's a challenge. That... Here's a challenge for you then. People always say this when they say they like characters. Name them. Oh, I couldn't I couldn't name them. For me, in my head, sure. it's the kinds of witches that they are. It's it's what they represent and what she needed them for in the coven. I can't remember their names off the top of my head. Because they're not well developed, because they don't leave a lasting impression, because they are archetypes and pastiches. Ergo, they're not well written. A character mm. who is well written jumps out the screen at you. The subjectivity mm. of it means that you can either relate to them as a hero or relate to hating them as a villain. And when you have mm. that level of relatability, the next step is learn their name. It's not... I hate purple guy from Infinity Wars. I hate Thanos. I get his yeah. motivations, but I hate him. I hate it's Loki. It's a context. I mean, you love to hate Loki. It's, I hate Darth Vader. He scares me. Yeah, Again, you love mm. to hate Darth Vader. Hannibal Lecter scares the hell out of me. Luke Skywalker is a hero. John Coffey in the Green Mile is a lovable giant. Frick, oh. Red from the Shawshank Redemption. What a great character. Great characters you remember and you remember mm. them instantly. I have to None say for myself though. Other than Agatha, whose freaking name is in the title. Yeah, I couldn't These name characters else. are good. No, of course the you can't because they're not good characters. At the same time though, my memory is terrible. So some of the characters that you've just mentioned, like iconic characters that I remember but wouldn't necessarily have remembered the names off the top of my head. So that's a memory thing for me as well. But this is also new. They're also long established movies that you watch multiple, multiple, multiple times. So I get where you're coming from, but the basis for comparison, you know, maybe, I maybe not Skywalker's fair. I knew Luke Skywalker's name after what I knew Luke Skywalker's name within the first 20 minutes. That name stuck with me. Yeah, but that's Great Star Wars. Character. No, that's a well-written character. Doesn't matter that it's an IP. You've got to take the yeah. IP out of it. If you put yourself in a setting, the first time you're ever watching Star Wars as a child, you're not aware of the grandiosity of what you're watching. This is just mm. a new movie for you that your parents or uncle or friends have told you this is great. For you, as a first time viewer, you don't know what you're in for. Mm. Yet you know who the hell Luke is in the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Because yeah. his story is relatable. He is well written. Oh, and by the way, good writing is also making sure that the script gives you a helping hand in remembering their name. Like they do say a few times, Luke. Fair. Luke. 
You know, mm. there's yeah. nothing done here on the script writing mm. level that has told me I need to remember these characters, oh. remember their names or care about them. I have one. So Deborah Jo Rupp's character Please. is Mrs. Hart. And that's the only reason that should pop back into my head. And like you've just said then about like, you mean Sharon, and stuff, they do repeat it. Sharon. Yeah, exactly. Sharon Hart. Mm. So, and they do say, when well, now you've mentioned that they do say her name a lot. In it, and uh, why did they do that? For, uh, that is her name yeah. because they're killing her off, and now, yeah, 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 because they're killing her off. So, and it was two very obvious that. that she was going to be the first one to go. Yep, two problems with this one that means you're falling into a style of writing which is telegraphing me what you're going to do with each episode or with certain characters. Oh, the moment you start to say their name more, warning, and the moment you yeah, start to pay true. more yeah. attention to. You know, it, it, it's it's you've said it perfectly. It is an exercise in box ticking this. It's like, oh, so she's going to be in trouble. OK, very quickly. We've done nothing mm -hmm. until this moment, but the audience needs to care about them. So how do we make them care about her? Give her a name. Make sure the name is said a few times. And damn it, we don't have time for a backstory or to do any type of character development. So damn it. Make her the lovable old lady. Hmm. I feel like, you know, with, with this, with the name, if that happens and we keep hearing some people's names before they die, I feel like Joe Hendry is going to pop up somewhere. <laughs> so you just throw him in. <laughs> Little pop for Joe there. Um, but it's, it. yeah, I, I think the, I think the crux of the story has become quite obvious now. The mention of the, the all of a sudden mention again, no story, no build to the story at all of Agatha giving her child away. We didn't even know Agatha had a child. I don't know if this is a reference to the previous stories. Giving her child away for the book. Like, yeah. so now it's really obvious that that kid is her child. And she's the crux of the story is going to be, she'll have a choice either between him and the Darkhold, or it'll be mm. like, she can save all of them and bring them all back, or the Darkhold. It, I feel like that, that's where it's, where it's that's going. Really right? challenge. Do we? But it's not. It. Oh, stop it! Come on. Do we? Okay. But are they building us to, out, to like? Do you want me to lay out not? the rest of the season for you? I can lay out the Go rest of the it. season for you immediately. Okay. Go They've for lost it. the one witch, and she was the innocent witch. At that, she was kind of like she, she didn't even know she was a witch. Purity. <laughs> exactly. She represented yeah. purity, innocence, ignorance, Nature. all of the things you're. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now. That's already triggered some goodness in Agatha's heart. Each episode is going to focus on one of the other nameless pastiche witches and ha having to use their unique power to overcome a trial. Like in this case, it was Potion Lady's turn, right? See, we've had her trial and I still couldn't name her. That's bad. But we're going to focus on each of the lady's powers. There's not going to be any more deaths now because the remaining witches actually have powers. So it's going to be a trial for each of them. Across the course of each trial, Agatha is going to have to come to terms with her being a bad person. And in order to advance her story, she'll have to do good in order to help them overcome their specific power trial. Bringing them all closer together. And at the end, she'll face Aubrey Plaza. And instead of absorbing all of their powers, which was what she first set out to do, which is why she got the coven together, absorb their powers to kill Aubrey Plaza. She's going to, through the power of love, because she's found out who her son is, and now she's got her coven around her, and the and the and the um the the theme will be strength and solidarity as opposed to strength singularity Sisterhood. and sisterhood mm. and power of love and motherhood, and that will be Aubrey Plaza. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, I'm not I'm not opposed to that theory, but at the same time, we were talking about it when we watched it last night. Why did Sharon die? Other than the fact because that Agatha could have absorbed the... her power. She didn't have power. She didn't but she, have she, any she power. She had natural power because she's a green witch, so she has natural power. It's not like a... Like, you needed to so kill the with, purity. You needed to kill purity to start fighting Agatha's darkness. They're trying to do some deeper theme of inner turmoil here. Oh, I've seen mm. something really pure die. That's triggered some sort of goodness in me. The problem is, while that's mm. actually a really good and solid theme, this is 
very beige writing and they're not going to develop that theme. It's just going to be something that stays underdeveloped. And if it's challenged by people like myself, they've got that theme to fall back on and say, ah, bah, bah, bah. but actually what happened is that we were showing how uh, the loss of purity invoked good within Agatha. But it's like, yes, but you didn't develop that. You had the pieces mm. on the chessboard there, but it's like no one moved the first pawn on the chessboard to start the game. The pieces were just there. You haven't mm. developed anything. Yeah, there's no there's no development. And I don't understand why. Like, I mean, I, I think we've said before, like, we'll be able to to analyze this better at the end as to why they didn't sure. like how much if they had to cram in. But it just doesn't make sense as to why you wouldn't build character behind all of these main characters like why do we care like it's it's one of those things like I, care? I cared that Sharon died because it's Deborah Joe Rupp and I love her and she's adorable and you just want to pick her up and put her in your pocket not because I cared about the character because we didn't yep. know her well enough the so, yeah, two it's, things it's that I found moderately interesting in this episode one of them was obviously Catherine Hahn who is she's undeniably charming it you, Yes. Even with a terrible script like this, it's Catherine Hahn. She's just great. She's fab. Um, Love her. She's great. Uh, did you catch the fact that they referenced Mephisto in this? Yes, now, we did. That made yeah. me go, yo, that, mm. uh, and, you know, I think that was, I hope that's not just an Easter egg and this is actually, you know, that amongst the nerdy, sweaty, the, you know, the horny, sweaty virgin nerds, myself included, um, would be exciting. You're not would virgin. You've got two children. <laughs> no, no, not so much. Def definitely nerdy and sweaty. Um, but yeah, the. But it always bothers me when you do that, right? You've got a bad show, bad writing, very beige, predictable story, seemingly predictable story. Again, I'll hold judgment, but it mm. looks predictable. Mm. Terribly written characters. But it's okay because we mentioned Mephisto. So even that's bothering yeah. me a little bit. I'm like, it's uh, another, it's another trying... box to tick. Yeah. It's a it's it's, it's that age old thing I keep coming back to the old visual noise trope. It's like you're gonna give me something mm -hmm. bright and shiny to play with, like a god level MCU villain who people have been clamoring for for ages now. And I do think mm. he's coming at some point. They're definitely yeah. toying with that notion. He's been properly mentioned now in name for the first time. So it can't just be a ball tease. And I just, I haven't been online yet, but I think it's a fair guess to say that a lot of people are going to be losing their minds and go, oh my God, my fist is coming. It's like, that's cool. But the, the way we've got there, the devices by which we're going to get there are not very good. I'm not saying Mephisto general... is going to even be in this season, but he he exists now. He's been yeah, mentioned. he exists. Mephisto he exists in that world thing. Yeah, and what, what I've had a little look online, and it's got an 83% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and all the what reviews that kind of come up first. This is what I mean. It's like even though I, what am I missing? You know, you you know all the elements I love about it. It's not an 83% rated program i think it's got around six um a six out of ten on imdb i think that's probably more accurate i'm not about to jump on now and be like you're all wrong for liking this no no in the game of life where if you're if you're winning you like something i'm the loser here right the fact that mm. people are enjoying this is great for them i'm happy for them and it's great for marvel and it's 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 great for entertainment in general if people are enjoying something collectively that is mm. just a good thing I'm yeah. just here in my dark corner needing a hug saying I'm sad because I think this I, I don't see what everyone else sees. So it's very rare that I'll actually find myself agreeing with what audiences say. But six out of ten is def on IMDb is definitely more where I would put, put this than an 83 on Rotten Tomatoes. That said, I still think this six is. is too high. I, th I still think six is too high. Um, See, no, I'm not I, I, I would say that's about like right. Or four. I think it's a five. I think it's mid level. It's mediocre. It's average. It's got some nice witchy themes, but it's badly written and it's got forgettable characters. That is as middle mm. of the range five out of ten as you get. It, this, this just but then if you thing. look at the positives, 
there's the the acting I'm really enjoying, and that's that's from everybody. And, and obviously, Hahn. Catherine Hand leading mm. the charge. I just love her anyway. But the production design, especially for the road and for the for that first trial, was absolutely awesome. Like I was analyzing uh, the production design of the house, it? and I was like, "This is a Ralph Lauren pitch." I just I, I just loved it. Yeah, I, I love the production design of this. I really, really do. I think I think it's really well done. Okay, I'll say this: it didn't work for my sensibilities. I'll say I'll, that's that's the no. nicest way I can say it. No, which part? I think you see. All I of didn't it, like the or step, like the road, the, the, the step, the, both the Stepford wife, the Stepford wives' house. I thought was really like this. Feels like cheap Stanley. Kubrick. You know, I I first referred to it as a Stepford wife house, and then I thought, no, it's not a Stepford wife house. Is that kind of pristine nineteen fifties thing? That's more yeah. the way that they position that is, but that but that's not what it was. The way that they positioned that was like like <clears throat> rich housewives with a beach house. So it, it's not quite the same. It kind of leans towards that, but it's not quite the same. And that's why the whole wine, the potion and the wine thing worked as well, because it's that whole um, so, you know, soccer mom with money. Everyone goes around for a glass of wine or that kind of thing. I totally got what they were doing with that. And I loved the Easter egg of their way out of that house being the oven. I loved that. Or the Hansel, the Hansel and Gretel thing. Yes, I really, really enjoyed that. I thought that was really nicely done. The oven I enjoyed, I have to say, I was like, okay, that's a nice little witchy tip of the hat there. The wine annoyed the living F Why? out of me. Why? Explain okay. that one. I, mess I messaged you this to you last night. Fake mm. tension. Nothing. Explain it, though. Not nothing. Not nothing. There are very... I have everyone has their pet peeves when it comes to movies and TV series, right? Mm. Some of the ones that annoy me are things like when a tertiary character set ha has a really, really important detail to tell the main character and doesn't tell them, but calls them on the phone and says, I can't tell you over the phone this really important MacGuffin of the plot, but meet mm. me at Widow's Peak at one minute past midnight and I'll tell you everything. Oh, do you think that character's making it to Widow's Peak? Are they hell? Obviously <laughs> not. You're going to kill that character off. It's like, duh. It's, it's so annoying. The way that every woman who's raped in a movie has to die. Gotta happen. The way that every final girl has got to, yeah. It's it's a really mm -hmm. nasty Hollywood trope. When you see women who have been through rape, nine times out of ten, that character has to die because she's clearly unsavable. I'm like, who thinks of this mm. stuff? It's Not really bad. I, I I get it. When it when it when it is done, when it is done, it's bad. Yeah, I've, I've it annoys it the hell out of me. And fake but how does that equate to the wine? Vis wait, 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 wait. I'm telling you things I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Visual noise, which I often talk about on this show, is another one of them, which is, you know, flashy things. Mephisto, in this case, visual noise. Bad story, bad characters, not much substance, but let's put Mephisto's name in here to appease the nerds. Visual noise, don't like it. And mm. now fake tension. Please allow me to refer to my note. <clears throat> fake, fake tension in the wine drinking scene was painful. In fairness, this isn't an Agatha problem. This is a Hollywood-esque writing problem that Agatha happens to be doing. Are they really expecting me to believe that any of the important characters are going to die in episode three? Do they really expect me to buy this? Are they really you trying think it to indicates tell me? That? No. Hun, what did they say? Oh, this potion's going to kill us. We're all going to die. Shut up. But then they still killed off character. No. Important character. Come on. Work with ah, me here. Okay. Don't, don't okay. play semantic hopscotch with me here. Be real. <laughs> in a scene... I'm trying to get in, in your brain. Scene, no, get in my brain. Here. There is only one character who matters in this show, and that's Agatha. None mm. of the other characters matter. They haven't built them up for us to care. We've agreed on that. They not at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to. These are all devices to make us care more about Agatha. 
right? Even Agatha yeah, isn't yeah. being properly treated, as you said. It's like, oh, let's give her a quick, let's shoehorn in a backstory about a kid in the dark hold. It's like, okay. Mm. Well, that's there now. I guess we have to play with this. And then we have the right to say, oh, but we did give her a backstory. I mean, yes, but Jesus Christ, shoehorned in much. So mm. you're telling me that all of this coven of witches, including Agatha, must drink this poison wine and then use potion mcpotions magic to overcome it and she has a freak out it's like oh my god we're all swelling oh the next step is an increased heartbeat we're all going to die we're all going to die say it again we're all going to die yes i've got the message we're all going to die okay i know you're not let's move the narrative on i know agatha mm -hmm. who is the only character i care about is going to be fine here right Oh, but then they do the potion. They do the all the ingredients in the sink. Ah, it's still not turning blue. I've lost my power. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. More fake tension. Oh, my God. There's only one minute left on the clock. Suck my junk. This is obviously going to be resolved. Can you please stop pretending like there's tension here? And it's like, but there could be something else. In that? Oh, Agatha's going to have to do a good thing, and she's going to have to be a good person. And she grabs the potion witch and says, I never liked you, but I need you right now. You can do this. We're all going to die. Ish, ish, proverbially, you can do this. Piss off. None of but these then, witches. Oh. On the other side of that, oh, yes, okay, I get that. Fake minute. tension. 29 minutes I get it. in a I get 30 it, minute on... episode. 29 <laughs> minutes. On the other Kill side me. of that. On the other side. We'll do if you don't shut up. On the other side of that. They built that up, like you say, to have that feeling. Like, we know you're not going to die. Blah, blah, blah. They kind of gave the impression that Sharon might have done. But then, obviously, at the end of it, everyone's fine. Everyone's going through the oven. So they want everyone to think, okay, everyone's fine. That's great. And then she ends up dead. Why is she dead? Like there's there's no explanation, no no obvious explanation as to why she's dead. She survived the trial, oh. or is it going to turn out that they didn't give her the potion in time, they or do what? I don't time. know. There's a gap there. They didn't do it in time there's... for sure. That's it. They well, didn't then do she it shouldn't have survived long enough to go through the oven. Which, by the way, there's also a major plot hole in that which you've just triggered into existence. Mm. The spell clearly said they all have to have taken the antidote for the young work. lad mm -hmm. what are you thinking of the young lad? but he didn't drink the wine i think i think the get out for that is that no 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 not the young lad is... if it didn't work oh. on sharon if it didn't work on sharon it shouldn't have then worked on them but it was the, the timing of it work. wasn't it it was the timing of it so the, the clock literally ran out as she had the antidote they all had it had the antidote before the time ran out but like actually to be fair if she hadn't have had the antidote in time, family. surely they all hadn't. No, no, I'm agreeing with you. Um, if she hadn't have had the antidote in time, then technically that should have made the entire thing fail. That's my rather point. than just her. Right? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. There is a big plot hole. Yeah. So that's the problem. Okay. Again, bad yeah. writing there. So if Sharon dies, surely they should all be screwed. Right? Yeah, you'd think that's so, what you? they've told us. That's not my interpretation. That's in the yeah, series. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So that's bad, but it's mm -hmm. fine. We move on. We forgive it because, hey, it's a Disney Plus show. You can't judge it so harshly. Oh, I'm sorry for judging it with. Oh logic. yes, we can. Oh, we absolutely can. And so can. now you're telling me in 33 minutes, bringing it back to my point, 29 minutes of wine drinking, telling me these characters are going to die when I know they're not. How? Riddle me this. How am I meant to find enjoyment when 29 minutes is telling me something that I know is going to be okay? The characters are going to die. We want mm. you to believe that. Yes, but I'm not a child and I'm not a, a, a moron and I know that these characters are going to be okay. Why don't you do something else with this episode? Mm. Why don't we do mm. something more than just this is filler for me, ultimately. And it does yeah. paint a very wider picture of this is how each episode's going to be. They're going to focus the mm -hmm. entirety of the episode on one task, 
for the witches to overcome. They're just going to be moving from room to room, location to location, fixing a task until they come up against yeah. Aubrey Plaza at the end of the road. That's literally the mm -hmm. season. And if I'm going to have another five episodes of this, I'll say again, kill me. Kill me. Why? When there is good I, I find it. When there's TV on like the penguin and I'm having to watch this dross, it's just painful. You don't have to watch it. I'll do this on my own you if you want. to review it. We're, we're here now. We're in episode three. We're here. It's it's happening. I hate watching again. This is... God damn it. And I'm getting live. I'm again. getting live from how much it's annoying you. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Um, what I'm struggling to kind of see at the minute... It's a proper witchy is laugh how... there too. Well, what, what can I say? Um, <laughs> what I'm struggling to that. see at the minute... <laughs> Is how like Aubrey Plaza is going to be the big bad because you know the witch's road is supposed to be a treacherous thing for any witch to do. So is she just your average witch that Agatha's had a problem with in the past, or you know what's this big bad that she is? Like she has to be, or is it Mephisto? Like in disguise? No, no, God no. I, I don't God, know. No. No, no. I'm struggling to. I'm struggling to see how that's going to map out at the moment. You're struggling to care, listen. right? You're struggling to care. <sighs> yeah, and I don't want to admit that, but it. Yeah, there's a lot of elements that I like about it, and I'm, I'm still hopeful. But yeah I, yeah, I just feel like it could have been done so much better. Yeah, that's the the bottom line of it for me. Good. It's not just me then. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I mean, you, you know what it is with me. It's personal. It's personal taste and personal interest, and I like the, the the witchy elements that I'm seeing in it, the everyday witchy elements that I'm seeing in it, and the the references to things that I have in my life. You know, like the you know the, all the green witchy stuff, and the, you know the mention of runes and incantations and all of that kind of thing. It's all stuff I absolutely love, and it's nice to see it in mainstream TV. But that's sure. the biggest kick Listen, getting out of it. The law and the you know the the law and the references of witch culture and witchcraft it's fun of course it is i remember watching sabrina growing up i liked it i remember when watching the craft when i was too young i liked it hmm. robert eggers Still movie the witch films. loved it yeah hell yeah craft is great with feruza bowl robert eggers robert eggers movie the witch that came out eight nine years ago that's fantastic i Darkness Falls, the story about the tooth fairy come witch, the horror movie that's that uh, very few people have seen. Really good. I like witchdom stuff. I right? remember it, but I don't like horror. This, this so I ain't it. it. This ain't it no. for me. Like like we said earlier, it comes back down to the kind of oh, witchcraft is trending right now. Let's go this way with yeah. Agatha because she was so great in Wonder Vision. There was so much was. potential there. So I can see the obvious decision of. Agatha was great. People loved it. Let's go down this road. But the motivation behind it feels much more on trend than there's a great story to tell here, which is obviously what we said at the beginning. But that, that's what it that's what it comes down to. But let's see what happens. It's just it's just Disney does the Wizard of Oz, essentially. That's all it is. A little bit, yeah. To see with the, the road. Yeah. It's literally all it is. That instead of the yellow brick road, they're going down the purple flower road. That's all it is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. Let's see. <laughs> uh, roll on episode four, I guess. Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what did we miss? Please, what did I miss, I guess? Lauren is Lauren Yeah, is I would love to see. The show than I am. But the, again, right. that's personal taste. That's, a, that's a, a love of the production design, a love of seeing witchy stuff in the mainstream, all of that. I can, I can remove that from the analysis mm. that we're giving it but i would love to see in the comments what people are loving about the things that we're criticizing like what are we missing <laughs> what? seriously what are we missing <laughs> and it's like oh you don't get it it's like there's not much to get the characters are bad what are we the not getting bad the, the themes are there like i'll, I'll give that mm. i said this i alluded to this earlier the themes that they want to play with are mm. good themes but they're not developing them they're just kind of they're there. not executed it's very like, well at all you know a mother sacrificing her child for temptation 
Good universal theme, that. Tragic. Terrible. But it's so shoehorned in. You know, mm. the idea the idea of uh, losing purity and that loss influencing you to become more pure and less bad yourself. Good theme. These are all good things happening here. These are all good devices. So shoehorned in, so underdeveloped. Mm. You can't just have a good theme or have a good concept, but then not develop it and just solely rely on the existence of that concept in your material underdeveloped and pass it off as genius it's yeah, yeah. It's, for me at least that's not good enough i demand more <laughs> i genuinely demand more for my entertainment and yeah, yeah I as i said let us know let us know below what you guys thought if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you don't like this video comment below and tell us why it's probably because of me right that's fine i can take it um but do either way, come and hate watch us each week or come and love watch us each week, just like we're doing with Agatha. Hit the subscribe button, tickle the notification bell, and we will see you guys all next week. I'm Nico Luro, she's Lauren, and we'll see you guys next week for episode four of the next Witch's Can't Trial. Wait. <laughs> Can't bloody wait.